and welcome to Gen 2. I'm Mackenzie Doherty and I look like a proper host this week and not like I just rolled out of bed without showering in three days. Anyways, this is your source for all things video game and tech related. Let's start things off with this week's up and coming releases. You can look forward to seeing these titles and many more released throughout the month on your favorite platforms. And the PC is definitely feeling some love this week. So the game's coming out on PC and some other platforms as well. Long Gone Days on February 18th, Metal Gear Survive, also available on PS4 and Xbox One on February 20th, Age of Empires Definitive Edition on February 20th, Solaris Apocalypse on February 22nd, Past Cure, also available on PS4 and Xbox One on February 23rd, and Yumi Nikki Dream Diary on February 23rd. The Xbox One is also getting The Station on February 19th, and Xenon Valkyrie Plus on February 20th. And finally, the Switch is getting one game called Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 Plus on February 22nd. These games and many more will be releasing throughout the month, so be sure to keep an eye out for them. Up next, check out Cheap Gamer with Mikey. Hello, and welcome to Cheap Gamer, where only having $10 doesn't mean a good game is out of reach. I'm Mikey, and this game is Simple Spy. Simple Spy is a 2D platformer developed by Kodari Games that focuses on the spy traversing through five different worlds with 16 levels each. These levels include a series of traps that the player must maneuver around by either ducking or jumping. These traps can be in the form of lasers, buzz saws, and basically anything that is red within the level. The player can also collect keys within the levels, and then send them on cosmetic differences to your character, which in my opinion, is not really worth it. When I first saw the game on Steam, I thought, oh, this will be a laugh, it'll be easy. I was completely wrong. This game is one of the most difficult games I've played in my entire life, and that is not even close to joking. I will admit, I'm not that good at video games, but even then, I know what I'm doing most of the time, and this game just aggravated me. To start out with, the obstacles, while they make sense, they're put in places where they know they're gonna kill you 15, 20, 25, 30 times. And guess what? There's no checkpoints in this game, so you have to start at the very beginning, even if you die to the very end of the level. I did that so many times, and it made me not very happy. And along with this, at the second world, I was already doing levels for hours on end, trying to get through them. And that is way too early for a spike in difficulty. So basically, those five worlds of 16 levels each, they last a very long time. My screaming and agony aside, let's get to the three points for a great game. Graphics, mechanics, and general fun. In terms of graphics, it's a 2D platformer. The graphics are very simple, but they work. And I have no problems with the graphics in this game. In terms of mechanics, control-wise, you can use your keyboard, WASD, spacebar the jump, you can use arrow keys, you can use a PS4 or Xbox controller, and it's all good. Except when it doesn't take your button presses and you die because of it. That happened numerous times during the game, and I cannot explain why. I can see people having fun with this game, but that kind of person is not me. Based on my experience with dying well over 500 times, I don't think it's way for me, but if someone with a challenge, it's a good game to be mad at. And so the question comes up, should you pay the $2 price tag on Steam for this game? For me, I say no. I say this game is not worth my time to pay two bucks for it, let alone any money whatsoever. I would not buy this game. This has been Mikey for Cheap Gamer. Keep watching Gen 2. Thanks, Mikey. So, who out here is excited for Devil May Cry HD Collection to launch? Wait, so none of you are actually here with me, so how about you leave us a comment on Facebook, tweet us on Twitter, or drop a comment underneath the YouTube video if you're excited for this to come out. Anyways, Devil May Cry HD Collection is going to be launching soon for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And it has a new trailer recently, but that's not what we're talking about here. No, what I'm going to talk about is how you can check it out first for free. I mean, it's not really free because you need to be a Twitch Prime member, and I looked that up, 
It's about $11 a month or $99 annually. So, If you're not a fan of Twitch, then you'll just have to wait a little bit longer. Twitch Prime members, on the other hand, will get the game on PC for free through the membership. Capcom announced that these Amazon slash Twitch Prime members, which, whatever, same thing because you have to go through Amazon Prime to be a Twitch Prime member, can snag this freebie starting February 27th. Once that's done, then you will have the ability to download the full game through the Twitch desktop app, barring that there's no problems with the desktop app during this time. Devil May Cry launched for the PS2 way back in 2001, so it's a little dated, but the reboot DMC Devil May Cry was released in 2013, so that's cool. Either way, there's a new game coming out for fans of the series. Now, listen closely. If you're a Twitch Prime fan and you want this game when it's free, then be sure to get it as soon as the promotion goes live, because sometimes they're only free for a few days. For those of us who can't shell out the money for Twitch Prime, then start saving up because the game will be launched May 13th for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This is a remastered version of the first three games in the series, which will run at a beautiful 60 frames per second. We'll continue after some commercials, but first, here's Dalton with Nostalgia Trip. Break apart a fresh pair of chopsticks and grab a big bowl of ramen for this week's episode of Nostalgia Trip, where we'll be taking a look at the first installment from the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm series. Both the game and the original Naruto series have both been finished for about 10 years now, so I won't feel too bad about spoiling what happens if you haven't already seen the series. The game goes through the entire original Naruto series and contains most of the highlights found within the 220 episodes of the series, including many memorable battles. Thankfully, it contains my favorite battle from any anime of all time, the fight between Rock Lee and Gaara during the tuning exams. If you've seen it before, you know what I'm talking about when I say that Rock Lee dropping his leg weights and then being so heavy they crush the ground beneath him, you knew it was about to go down. The developers did, however, omit the battle with Zabuza and Haku, which I always think is important because it was the first time we really see Naruto and his team work together to show their strength. Storm 1 was the first Naruto game to switch from the 2D style of fighting, which you would find in a game like Street Fighter or the new Dragon Ball Fighter Z, to a 3D style, which is something more like you would find in the Dragon Ball Xenoverse games. Also new to the series is the Awakening ability that every character has. It can be activated after your character takes a certain amount of damage and can lead to increased speed, damage, and sometimes different ninjutsu abilities. However, the Awakening stage only lasts for a set period of time, because you can only stay woke for so long. Throughout the game you can find and purchase collectibles that don't really do a whole lot for you, things along the lines of different menu music and different pictures that show up when you defeat somebody with your ultimate jutsu. It's a very decently done game in terms of fighting and the mechanics, but the story left much to be desired. Most of it was told through scrolling text or one line of dialogue from a character before a fight. This might have been just because they didn't have the time and resources or to try and get those who haven't seen the show but played the game to watch the show. Thankfully they did the storytelling in the sequels much better with real cutscenes and character monologues. There's not really a whole lot of game left to talk about, so I'd like to talk about some of my favorites and my least favorite from the game and series. First of all, my number one favorite, partially because of the fight I mentioned earlier, Rock Lee. Rock Lee, in my mind, he's the one who really beats the odds, not Naruto. Lee trains so much he puts Rocky to shame and doesn't have the whole, oh yeah, I've got the strongest beast in the world sealed inside me giving me power trump card like Naruto does. Second is going to be my wild card, Kimimaro. He's really fun to play as in the game and also got to have a really entertaining fight with Rock Lee in the show. Did I forget to mention his power is he literally uses his own bones as weapons, just pulling out his spine and using it as a sort of sword? I'm going to put Guy Sensei here literally just because of this jutsu you're seeing right now where he does 100 push-ups on his opponent. Now has got to be my all-time least favorite character. He's so bad not even having a ninja hound can make him cool. Kiba is just kind of like a born loser. I can't really explain. I mean, he lost to Naruto, and this is legit in the show because Naruto farted when Kiba had his sense of smell increased. That's going to do it for this week's show. I'm going to go wait for more Shippuden episodes to be dubbed, and you can stay right here for more Gen 2. See ya! Welcome back to Gen 2. I'm your host, Mackenzie Doherty, and you just saw Dalton with Nostalgia Trip. Deep Silver has been acquired by THQ Nordic. Y'all know what this means, right? Saints Row's back. THQ Nordic announced that they've acquired Coach Media, which is video game publisher Deep Silver's parent company. And this wasn't a cheap deal either, considering it's worth 149 million smackaroonies. This means that THQ Nordic, formerly Nordic Games, now owns the game series Saints Row, Homefront, Dead Island, Metro, and more. 
So this means that the new THQ has what the old THQ sold off in 2012 after filing for bankruptcy. Since this acquisition happened, the number of total employees has risen. The new company has more than 1,600 employees across a combined 36 internal and external studios. Altogether, the company has 106 intellectual properties. All of this is according to a news release, which is why I have all those numbers. Otherwise, I wouldn't. According to the same news release, Coach Media will operate as a separate entity under THQ Nordic, so no restructuring or cost-saving programs are planned. There also have been no suggestions of layoffs as part of this acquisition, so employees don't have to worry about being fired for a little bit longer. THQ Nordic and Coach Media have a combined 50 projects in development. 17 have been announced as of December 13, 2017. So this means that there are 33 unannounced titles. One of those unannounced ones is a new AAA game from Deep Silver Volition, who is a Saints Row developer. So, who knows? Now, it's time for Battle of the Bad with Madeline. Hello, and welcome to another week of Battle of the Bad. This week, my guest star is Colin. What's up? And we are playing Smash Brothers. Um, I've only played this since I was 12. Died a lot then, so I've probably only gotten worse. We'll try this. How long have you been playing this game? Ooh, I've had it ever since I was like three or four with a Nintendo 64. So like this game I've only had it since it came out. So like three years, four years maybe? Dang. Okay, well then um, my hopes have gotten down even farther of winning this game. My goal at the end is to at least kill you once or like just push you off the edge. Just like a little nudge. Um, my... I'm gonna go with this... Let's go with Sonic. He's a fast buddy. He's. You're going with Mario, so like you're basic. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> you, got, you gotta be the jack of all trades, you know? Uh, so how many characters are actually in this game? Ooh, I think this is the, I don't know how many. I think it's over 20 something to 30 ish. He's so fast. Oh God. Do you like know all of their um, skills? Oh yeah. I've, Play random with my friends. Oh, 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 I'm gonna literally kill myself because I don't know how to stay on the screen. Ah. Ooh, I like this handstand, like kick you in the back type of thing. It's, it's going on. Oh yes, Gramps. I'm. Like, <laughs> You're kicking my butt. <laughs> Lol. Twelve year old me would be impressed. Oh. Uh. No 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 no. Sonic, don't disappoint. Sonic. Okay, one down. That's fine. I have two more lives. You're to the edge, and that's scaring me because like I don't do good with edges. Mario, by gosh, I did. Why does he walk so weird? Who? Is Sonic. It you? Look, look at him walk. He like. Ah! No, no, no! Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Where did I go? Where are we at? Oh. That's fine. Last life. Live a little. This is li that's Sonic. Like right now, that's me. That's how I feel. Whoa! <laughs> Why are you on steroids? How'd you do that? I can't. I can't. Fail. And these fireballs are like starting to. Bye bye. Please no. No 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 no. How did I jump? Do it again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. Find the map. Find the map. Find the map. Stay on the map. Stay on the map. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought I got you. Uh, it's fine. I can. Woo, you got me. Okay, my goal is done. Oh, how did I do that? What did I press? Is that the B thingy? Oh, yeah. I just keep doing like handstand kicks. That's my go to move. Just press some buttons. <laughs> and where the. I'm loving this like background. You see that moon? Is that the moon? Yeah. Okay. I'd say it's the moon. Maybe it's you. Um, who are your go to characters to Ooh, play on? This? Mario and Ganondorf, and I'd say Toon Link would be my third one. Why Ganondorf again? He's just big and heavy, and like no matter how hard you're losing, you can like make up for it. I'm Real gonna be fast. a dragon. <laughs> I like butt smack you, and you're not even here to get smacked. Oh. Ooh, that's <gasps> your side beat. Did I just literally kill myself? <laughs> okay, my new goal, because obviously I beat my first goal because I'm not good. At oh, is to kill you once every game. <gasps> Why was I celebrating for me dying? I thought that was you. 
I was like, oh, okay. I was like, so excited. You can celebrate. I thought that was you. We're gonna go with Luigi's annoying. He's like, no. <laughs> Luigi's just very. You don't like the scared little brother? No. He he is the scared little brother. Like that's just get a life. Oh, watch out, car. What? <laughs> There's a little warning. Oh, I was like, you saw it before it even showed up. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, sorry. You can see the cars coming from the side. I'm on a treat. Smash ball. Oh! Uh -oh. Okay, so you have to hit neutral B if you want to. Okay, I actually knocked that out of you. I hit you so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I thought here. I was going to tell you fast enough. Well, there goes my um, life. It's fine. Give me the photo ball. Give me the photo ball. Oh, you can, you're, you're messing the drugstore sign up. Someone like worked really hard for that. <gasps> uh, oh. Oh, 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 I choose you. Hello? Uh -oh. Hello? It, <laughs> what the F? Uh, all what of our directions got changed. What the <laughs> he just ran off stage. Oh. Where'd I go? <gasps> oh, I am. Okay, that hurt a little bit. I'm gonna I'm be honest with you. That one probably hurt. You got a sword. I got a sword. My sword's bigger, but obviously size does not matter. Oh, one freaking life left. Okay, friendo, come up. Bye, bye, friendo. Hey, what he's the back. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> How? That's so. Okay, Where am I gonna go camp? Hey, watch out! Don't fall. I got you, bud. <laughs> Thanks for trying to save me. <laughs> I'm okay, though. No. Thank you for being on Battle of the Bad this week. Um, stay tuned for next week. We will see you guys again later. Thank you for watching Gen 2. I'm Mackenzie Doherty. Stay tuned for Project Delta, where bad games go to die and good games get played badly. Gen 2 and Delta are each week, Monday through Thursday at 8 p.m. And you can watch our content online at facebook.com slash gen28 and on KWT's YouTube page. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Delta. I'm Dalton here with uh, today's uh, driver and, and con body with a controller, Blake File. Hello, I'm Blake, and I've just been caught by a guard. So I'm doing the dumb thing and fighting back already. This is going to go well. So this week, uh, Blake is a huge fan of the new Metal Gear uh, Survive game oh. that's coming out. So he wanted to play some Metal Gear 5 just to kind of get, get back into the vibe of controlling Snake and, you know, feeling him out, getting ready to uh, hide in some boxes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Metal Gear Survive, and that was kind of a false claim that I am a huge fan of it. I'm actually quite against the idea of it because Konami is dumb, to put it simply. Uh, because they severed ties with Hideo Kojima, the man behind the Metal Gear games as a whole. If there, if there was like a game that's already out that you could like compare Survive to, what would you say that's it's like that it would be comparative to? See, like from what I've gathered from like the trailer and the reveal, uh, it's like a zombie survival game. So it'd be more like a Left 4 Dead type or. Uh, like more like a Call of Duty Zombies or like Killing Floor 2 is what I'd guess. So in other words, just so. kind of something that would come out and just move more units of a game. Like for example, I know I've seen people play um, the Sniper Elite game. They came out with their own kind of zombies, like three or so, like a trilogy type thing. And I remember seeing people play that. And it was just kind of like another game that they could put out and make more money off of because who doesn't like money? Exactly. Well, and like, it, I don't know, I feel like they're kind of doing a Cloverfield type thing where uh, they are like, they took a game that they found or like with Cloverfield, they took a movie that they found and they're like, oh yeah, we'll just slap the Cloverfield name on it and it'll just sell more. And so they're like, oh yeah, we got this zombie survival uh, IP and we're just going to make it uh, we're just going to slap Metal Gear on it and that'll hopefully sell more, which is kind of lazy marketing and game making, I feel like. Yeah, so, uh, you know, to me, honestly, uh, Metal Gear isn't something that I've played a whole lot of. I remember when I was younger seeing other people play it, and it's it's not really something that I've ever 
played by have seen. You know, the classic sneaking in the boxes. There's the, oh, you could fight this boss who's really hard, or you could unplug your controller and put it in a different port. So, like, what's your experience with the Metal Gear series? Uh, so, I started off with Metal Gear Solid, which actually isn't the first game in the Metal Gear series. It's actually started off with Metal Gear and then Metal Gear 2, which are both, like, 2D side-scrollers. Quite interesting fact. I found out I always thought Metal Gear Solid was just the start of it all. But, yeah, my first experience was with Metal Gear Solid 2, and uh, 2 as in T-O-O, not, like, the second one. I haven't actually played that one. But... Uh, yeah, my first experience was playing it on back in the good old days of when like you could get demos for games oh, with yeah. like that was Pizza a Hut and fantastic stuff. Fantastic time! Oh yeah, it was great. So like I played that a lot, and because my cousins had it, and so I'd go over to their house and play just the opening sequence for Metal Gear Solid on Shadow Moses Island, which was the greatest like 30 minutes of gameplay I've ever had as a kid, because that game was just beautiful. I loved sneaking around and trying out new things to uh, like get past the guards and break into the base on there. So Yeah, we can see here that you're uh, making sure to send all your uh, enemies up into the sky with your, your uh, what, what was it called again? Uh, Fulton recovery device. So like you can, if you knock out enemies, you can send them uh, back to mother base, which like is kind of the premise of this game, rebuilding mother base, because at the end of uh, oh shoot! Uh, at the end of the Metal Gear Solid Five uh, Ground Zeroes, which was kind of a prequel uh, mm -hmm. teaser for this game, uh, Mother Base is destroyed. Spoilers if you haven't played. Sorry for the late spoiler notice, but why can't I find this guy? I need to type. But uh, but yeah, so it starts off with you be waking up in a hospital as a burn victim because Snake is just unrecognizable at this point so yeah that's something i've always wanted to buy i know a lot of the 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 metal gear games you have names like snake eater and the, there's like the twin snakes and stuff and mm -hmm. i've i've always not been able to keep track of is there more than one snake who am i playing as yeah there is definitely more than one snake there is solid snake who is in uh metal gear solid and there's liquid snake who is also in metal gear solid and they're twins which is like where the twin snakes uh name comes from so like they're they're basically the same person because they're made from the same strand of dna oh i found some document that i didn't even know i was looking for uh but yeah so they come from the same strand of dna and they're from like the same person they're basically the same person and uh and then there's this one who is punished snake punished venom snake who's who you're playing as in this one who is also Big Boss, who in Solid Snake becomes Big Boss at the end of Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, Snake Eater, which is in chronological order, the first one in the series. Like, the game is, the series is told out of order, and so everyone was like thinking that, oh, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots is gonna be the last Metal Gear game, but now they've released these two, and also will soon be re releasing uh, uh, survive. Well, see, now now I'm glad you cleared that up for me, and I know it's not just a fact of uh, me not being smart enough to understand that No, it, it's actually just one guy. It's actually a very confusing storyline. Yes, it is very confusing because, like, in this game, you got Revolver Ocelot, who is an ally of yours, but then in, like, other Metal Gear games, he's an enemy. So, like, it, it's just a lot of confusion and... Uh, unnecessary. Of Ocelot, he is the uh, the gunsmitter, correct? Yeah, he is. I do, I do love watching the videos of the people recreating that because mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Honestly. Oh, yeah. He, he, he goes nuts with his revolvers. He, he's called Revolver Ocelot for a reason, because the only weapons he ever uses are is a set of revolvers, and he can like ricochet them, ricochet his shots off walls and stuff, and he's just a monster with him. And like with uh, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, there's a, an achievement in the game actually where there's a point in the story where he gets knocked out with like a group of uh, Soviet soldiers, and so and so there's a way for you to kill him, which throws off the whole plot line and storyline because he's like alive until the very end of Guns of the Patriots. Okay. So, 
it's just a cool little achievement to start a paradox. Okay, so one last question before we wrap it up. Mm -hmm. I know that Snake is in Smash Brothers Brawl. Uh, Brawl, yes. So what is your favorite character in a fighting game that doesn't belong? Uh, ooh. I'd probably actually have to go with Snake because I played with him a ton on Brawl and I just would, I, I would spam the crap out of his like mortar that you can uh, draw, which is like a down B or down strong attack. So I would spam the crap out of that and everyone would hate me for doing that, but you know. All right, well that's gonna be whatever. all from us here today. So make sure to tune in next week for more Delta and also for more Gen 2. Hi guys, it's Mackenzie. Thanks for watching this episode of Gen 2. To see last week's episode, click here. To see every episode so far, click over here. And if you want to see all our amazing KWT shows, click the subscribe button up here. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week with more Gen 2.